so the agenda of our meeting has, uh, is a little bit different than the ones which was sent in email. Uh, first we will talk about basics of unit testing, uh, then I will present to you uh, some uh, standard frameworks for C and C++ languages. Uh, then we will sh I will show you what are the differences in embedded uh, kind of uh, development between the, the desktop one or website. Uh, then we will move to test driven development. The red green refactor. Red means you have a test which is fa which doesn't com compile or fails. Green means that this test pass, and refactor means that you just don't uh, uh, don't change uh, algorithm, but only refactor the code. Uh, then we will do some. I will. We will uh, be developing a simple single linked list in C, and uh, with a very lightweight embedded framework, a unit testing framework called Unity from the switch. That's the, how, it, how, it, how we spell it. And uh, I will show you how to uh, how to set up a new project and uh, uh, just uh, we will do the test driven development of such simple thing like single list. Then we will talk about test driven development versus debug later programming. What are pros and cons? Why, why, why to do TDD and why to do debug later programming? And after that, I will uh, we will I will show you how to uh, how what are the mocking techniques in C. Uh, so how to fix dependencies because uh, when we will develop the single list, it won't have any dependencies. But sometimes when you, for example, want to test Ethernet driver or uh, some kind of database connection, you need to make a stub of it or mock and I will show you how to do this in C programming language when we don't have a in object oriented interfaces. And after that we will talk a little bit about co code coverage, what is valuable in code coverage and what is also dangerous about this and how to add tests into project with legacy code because it is often that the uh, managers or uh, uh, the project decides now, okay, now we write unit tests, and then we, need, we decide, okay, so we need to uh, write a unit test for code which is not testable, which was written without unit tests, and it's really hard, and I hate it. I mean, it's not a good way to do this. We will, I will show you how I like to do it. Yeah. So let's start. What is unit test? So unit test is a test which verifies a, a small piece of code. I want unit tests to verify one line of code, one function, one class, or one module. I, it means you decide what is a small piece of code. Uh, but uh, when so, what's uh, another? Uh, what also unit test? Unit test needs to run quickly. You are able to write a test, run it, and it, it during your development, it doesn't make you uh, angry when you're uh, when when you run this test. So you, it, it's takes about a few seconds just to run all test suits for your application. And the other thing is that the unit test works in isolation. Isolation means that the first thing most important than the unit test when fails, it shows exactly root cause of, an, of this error, of this bug, and you are very easily can uh, determine where, you're, where you made a mistake. So that's the one thing. And the other thing is that uh, Unit tests can run in parallel. They don't depend. The unit test depends only on on this unit test. So both of this, uh, both of them, we may achieve by uh, identifying and breaking dependencies. Okay. So, what are the goals of unit testing? The the most valuable goal of unit testing is confidence. You are you have some kind of safety net. So when you are working with a code, the legacy code grows, you are sure that every change which you make won't break existing functionality because you have those unit tests. You are confident when you are factoring code because you won't break existing functionality. You don't have to check it, you just run unit test and you are sure that, that you didn't make any kind of new error to the old code. Uh, the other thing which uh, is a little bit dangerous. It's a better design. Why is, why is better design? Because you need to identify each dependent, each dependency, external dependencies. So, uh, because of this, you the code is loosely coupled, and uh, uh, yeah. And then the last thing is a better interface API. When you develop code with unit testing, you are instant, instantly a user of your code. So you are focusing on its API, on its interface, because you are the first user of this code. 
So it's also very good. Uh, so it's also the goal of unit testing. So now let's uh, move a little bit further. Let's talk about what makes a test valuable. Uh, the first thing, which is very important in the te unit test, has a very high chance of catching a regression error. It, there should be chance, not change. It means that you don't have to test a trivial code, but uh, when you are, uh, it's a simple. You don't have to test yet a trivial code, uh, so so the, your test has very low chance. And okay, let's move further. Uh, test has very low chance of producing a false positive. False positive is a kind of false alarm. So uh, it means you can achieve that by not uh, binding your test into your implementation, only to the interface. Because when the interface change, uh, the interface won't change so often as an implementation. So when you change uh, the implementation, uh, your test must has to still be uh, be green. So still has to pass. Because if other way, if it will uh, it will be it, if it fail every time the when you every time when you make some kind of code refactoring or slight change implementation, you will get mad because you don't want to spend time on refactoring unit tests. That's very important. Uh, another, another thing which makes a test valuable, it's, it has to provide very fast feedback. You just test fails, you already, you immediately know where, they, where is the root cause, what goes wrong. Uh, you don't spend time for it. It has low maintenance cost. Maintenance means tests are cold, so uh, as other codes, it has to be maintained. I mean, so it you should be it should be written in clear way, like uh, in very good practices. I mean, it's even sometimes more important to focus on your test than when you're test-driven developing a module than on your code, because your Tests are the, are the way you design your module, and it's your safety net. So treat it very, uh, with very high priority. Uh, the other thing is describe how to use model, especially when you are work, working in a big project. Uh, unit tests may show your colleagues uh, how to use uh, your code. So because this your unit tests use the, use this API which you developed. So uh, when your a colleague wants to use it, you just show up, you just tell him, hey, here you've got unit test, everything is there described. And uh, the, the last thing, but not least, is that the unit test should describe the requirement. Uh, it's the best when uh, there is kind of, you have a, some kind of user stories or requirements, and each unit test is uh, bind to one of these requirements. So when the unit test fail, you know that these requirements also fail. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the frameworks for embedded system. The most popular Google test, it's a Google C++ test framework. It's open source. It is, right now, it's very powerful. Uh, it has a lot of assertions. Uh, it's written in C++ 11. Uh, it has also a kind of which, something which you call Google Mock. It's the simple way to, uh, to make a test stop or test mocks. Uh, there are uh, fatal, non-fatal errors, so the test will, may continue to run after failure or it may, it may stop with an assertion. And uh, it has very well described manual. CBP unit is another uh, less popular than Google test, uh, testing framework, but it is very similar to it. The uh, assertions and the mock kind of thing is uh, there is almost one to one to Google test. And the last which we will use today in our workshop is Unity. Uh, Unity is not so big as Google test, it just consists of two files, source and headers. It is written in pure C and it's very lightweight. You may add Unity to ev almost every uh, project in C which, when you, which you are developing. So it's very easy to integrate Unity to run on your target board, almost every target board which in project which is using pure C language. Uh, now, what's important when, you, when we are discussing embedded TDD? Uh, the first thing, which is often, is we need to develop, a, develop code on a hardware which is not yet ready. So we have a requirements and we may start writing code uh, uh, in parallel with hardware development because we have unit tests 
which makes us sure that we uh, will make those requirements. The other thing is cross-compilation. Cross it means we, we use different toolchain for our uh, desktops than on our uh, target ports. So uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, C libraries, different some kind of different operating system API. So uh, it is very important. So it's also a different thing. In uh, okay, I, I will spend more time about cross-compilation next slide. Uh, what is uh, the, uh, the next thing is about memory and other uh, res resources constraints. Uh, we also should uh, think about it when we write our tests uh, for embedded uh, develop for embedded systems. Uh, the other thing is target debug, which takes a lot of time. Sometimes take a lot of time to set up a, uh, to set up debug uh, interface for our target to uh, uh, to. Uh, program flash memory and other things to just configure and to reproduce the defect, for example. And the next thing is architecture. Some we, we may develop on x86 machine and run code on ARM machines, which are very different, for example. Uh, so how to how to use TDD or whole continuous integration regarding to unit test in embedded systems? Uh, that first is a standard way. Write a test, make it pass so red, green, and then refactor the code. Uh, the next, and if we were talking about uh, about the desktop uh, environment, we would just finish here. But we are in embedded, so uh, the next thing is just compile with our toolchain, our toolchain, toolchain for target board, and then run those tests on target. It's also very important, especially due to uh, those resource constraints. Because these tests are your, sa are, are, are your safety nets, so if so, you trust them. So if they, uh, so you can't just uh, run your unit test to uh, check the business logic of your components. If it's possible, try to run, the, run them also on your target board. Uh, okay, how do, now let's see how how it looks test driven development. There are a few points. First, we write the test. Uh, before starting development, we, we should write uh, some kind of test list which are matching our requirements. Uh, then, we sometimes uh, try to build it, it won't co even compile. Then make it compile, uh, make it uh, so, and uh, fix the linker errors. Uh, so, it will be, you, you will be able to run it, but the test will fail. Then write the code so your test will pass, and then if you Feel that you have to the code if the code smells, for example, uh, refactor the code and see that the test still is green. And yeah, if no, if your test, if your, for example, older test fails after your new change, then you also you have to uh, once again write a test, make it build, uh, ref uh, make it pass, refactor, and uh, until and do it until it is done. So how, let's now move to the unit test code, how, how every unit test should look like. There's a template. First, uh, setup. It's often, for, often uh, those uh, unit testing frameworks has a kind of ability to group tests to have a s one setup and one teardown. So yeah, after, so after setup, uh, it is written as do. So do means that uh, perform action which will which, uh, which, when you are able to check, to test the, the thing uh, which you want to test. Then test it and then tear down. Do not mix. Do check, do check. Because at first you have to do the stuff, then check it. Not mixing because your test won't be easy to read then. Okay, so now uh, we will move to uh, hands on to our TDD. We'll, I will show you how to implement the linked list in test-driven development in pure C. We will be working on Ubuntu, on Eclipse, uh, with GCC compiler. So I've written the test list for our linked list. So the first uh, test which I want to pass is uh, I am able to create a list with only one element. Uh, then uh, after it, I want to set its value. I want to then I want to get the value of, by index of this list. Uh, I want to add an element to the list. I want to traverse this list, remove element from list, add element to the middle of list, 
I also could uh, uh, could improve this test list of don't crash uh, after passing, for example, null pointer, or do not crash after try to. Uh, the, the my list uh, won't allow user to get value of uh, index which is out of bound, for example. But uh, I, I expect that I trust my users, so I, I, we don't have enough time to just uh, fix all of the security. So this is our test list for this project. So now, yeah, let's move to our. Uh, the, okay, I can't see that it is. Okay, now we have it. Okay, great. Uh, do you, can you read what is written in the screen? Okay, great. So we have uh, what is important uh, in our project. Okay. Can you make it bigger? Um, I I don't know how. Okay. Control plus. Control plus. Maybe. No. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. To try to change font, but I don't know how to do this. Okay, uh, let's continue. Mm. I'll just refresh the view. Okay, so in our project, which is uh, linked list, we have uh, four important files. First important file is our make file where I receive how to build our project. The other important file is uh, wait a moment. Is our test list? Is our t t test file, which is now has only one test, which just has a simple ass assertion if one is equal to one. So we are sure that w that our project is compiling and everything if our environment is done. Uh, and we have uh, two uh, source one source files and one header files. It is in folders src, in directory src, linklist.c and linklist.header. Okay, so let's look how our make file looks like. What's important here? We build, to build our test, we need to build uh, the, we, we need to build the unit testing framework library, which is called unity.object, mm, uh, test linked list object and linked list object. Uh, and uh, when we, Build it for test. It will build all of the our object files, link it, and then try to run this test. So, okay, Ooh. yeah, okay, great. So, great. yeah, it's okay, awesome. So, yeah, we have a recipe to clean. So, we just uh, clean every file which we build. Uh, we have a, this is recipe for our test. So, as you see, we will build one, our one test file, and then uh, we will try to run it. So make test will build everything and run it, so we will have an immediately input, and then our yeah, and then a standard just uh, building object necessary object files, which is uh, our test file, our uh, test unit testing framework, and uh, our uh, testing file link is dot all. Okay, so let's now, as you can see, our source source file is empty right now, our header file is also empty right now, so we have only this uh, simple assertion which so we will be sure how to that our project is set up correctly okay bank test and this is how it looks our output okay it also I hate it uh, do you know how to <laughs> uh, you can see it or not <coughs> there's an option there uh, view Scale factor. View? Uh, uh, not the Oracle uh, virtual box. Okay, view. View, scale factor. Scale mode? Ah, scale yeah. factor, okay. Yeah. 115. Okay, could you see it right now? Ankle control plus works in the. If you click on the shell and we press control plus. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, as you see, it's our uh, what uh, it's our GCC which was building, and uh, then we run our test. We have only one test case, means test full bar, which passed, and this is the overall report. Okay, great. So now let's move uh, to the development phase. 
uh, I have prepared uh, a kind of uh, copy paste uh, so we won't uh, waste time to my t typing code so let's start with the first test which was in our which was the, our test uh, was the first initial list with one element only so uh, let's uh, move this test to our test files okay uh, our testing framework unity uh, expect us to add every test in uh, main so it, it knows which which function to run uh, Google test on the other hand just uh, runs everything which is marked test test you don't need to type it two times like in the unity we expect now that this test won't compile Yes, we have uh, an error which means that uh, there is uh, no the link list create is not defined. This node is also unknown to the compiler and to linker. So we at uh, firstly we will append our code to the header file. Yeah, we'll do here abstract data types, so the uh, our list will be structure will be hidden to the uh, to to the user. And as we have a three uh, three functions: create, destroy, and take next element. I'm not sure if it's uh, if let's see if we need the text. Yep, we are. Yes, we are taking. We are. We, we are testing the next element in the, this function. So uh, let's now let's now apply this uh, in, in, uh, add code, which so our test will pass right now. As you as you can see. It's this code which are developed here is not just to pass this to one test. I mean, we are testing in our te in our uh, linked list initially one element uh, test case. We are testing the the uh, next element of linked list function will uh, <coughs> return our we, we will return null pointer to us. So uh, to be honest, to run it in this in test driven development. We shouldn't. We should just remove everything, just to fit the compiler. Remove every implementation of this function and uh, left only empty functions just to fit the compiler. And instead of <coughs> having here a return node next, we should have return null. And then our t then we will be purely TDD. I have done it before, but uh, w because it's copy paste of uh, you know entire project of it, it's it doesn't look like this because we won't have enough time to, to, to do it in, 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 in a, this kind of thing. It's because uh, we, we need to uh, remember that in TDD our test drives the code, so I write only piece of code which are necessary to pass those single tests. I don't care about what I will do, what I will need also. I, I mean, we only write uh, so small uh, piece of code that uh, to pass our test, we don't care about any other business logic. The, our tests care about business logic, but our code does not. Our code does, uh, co uh, is connected only to those tests. Uh, but I will left it like this because uh, it is, uh, this code uh, grows when I was making other tests. So try to uh, compile it. Yeah, now our linked list initially one element pass. So uh, we are now green. We, may this, this, we, we now may uh, make a decision to refactor this code or we may continue to uh, to develop our linked list. So uh, let's uh, see another test. Our another test was set value of one element. So this is our test case. It just creates lists, try to set data of this element, and uh, makes an assertion if uh, the data, uh, the value which we set to this element is equals to the value we yeah to the value which is there. Okay, so 
Okay, we need to add our test to the Unity. Let's try to compile it. It does not compile, so let's at first feed the compiler, then we try to fix the linker. Okay, so uh, this is uh, this is our code. To be honest, I uh, at first we have to make those tests. When it, when we make it compile, we need to now make it red. So uh, let's uh, instead of uh, creating some kind of implementation, red, uh, let now check uh, that our test is tr uh, it checks if this code uh, makes a failure. So I've commented out the logic and just. Uh, Put a simple st simple stops. Try to run it. Yes, our test fails. Right now, they expect that we expected ten, but we received zero. So let's now add uh, this implementation. Okay, now our test passes after it and. Uh, Okay, and that is how we would continue to grow our test. Then we will uh, add a, uh, another test would be get value by index. Then uh, add element set data. Uh, then we'll try to traverse list. Uh, but it's the same way that I showed you. Just um, write a test, write co which doesn't compile. Uh, write uh, then write code which which compile that so the test will compile but will not pass and then try to uh, write code which passes all this test and the, and all of the former tests. What is another uh, uh, what we didn't mention in this test is that our destroy function currently do nothing just freeze the head and does nothing. What is what we can do with it? We we can run the valgrind. Uh, we can run our t run our unit test on under Valgrin, for example, to check the memory leaks. It will show us. So it's also one kind of requirement that uh, your code needs to uh, pass. Uh, that it doesn't doesn't allow us to make some kind of memory leaks. And uh, it you might do it in uh, two ways. Firstly, you can stop uh, heap implementation, so you will add, add a kind of spy to a malloc functions and free or another dynamic memory allocation to your code. So you will uh, just count how many uh, bytes of memory were allocated and then uh, check it or just use some kind of profiling tools like Vargrind or some special flag to which is passed to GCC. Yeah, but, uh, but that's the same. So I think we could skip this part of the of code or if, if you want I will show you, but it depends. No, it, it's it's clear. Okay, so let's move to the more interesting part. I hope. Uh, okay, so now let's uh, talk a little bit about this debug later programming. So first, we write uh, our code. So we often we do not have time, so uh, we, we are under some kind of time pressure, so we want to deliver, um, uh, deliver a code very fast, so we don't have time to spend on our, te on our test. So we uh, develop the feature, often after it we have to develop another tip feature, so we didn't write uh, tests for our last uh, task. And then, we, and then there is this, okay, now I will focus on the test. And during this testing phase, uh, you will discover a lot of defects. And you will discover some kind of defects. One of them uh, were, uh, are related to code which you developed, for example, a few months ago, and you are not up to date with this code. The other are, uh, were, uh, are because uh, some changes which you didn't make. So you are uh, wasting time on fighting some kind of root cause of it. And uh, uh, when you discover this defect, then you need to debug it. So again, finding root cause, uh, finding how to fix it, talking to people, hey, you broke my code, and uh, it's not the best part. But uh, 
what I said, it's uh, you. It's often because you don't have you have a time pressure to develop a new feature, a new code. So you don't have you you don't want to waste it on test uh, kind of, of of on testing. So you deliver a feature with um, some kind of bugs which were not discovered yet. And the new is test driven development. It's you mix test with development and the debug. So you all all of this you do a part in parallel. Uh, so you know. So at first you it's easy to find the root cause. Secondly, you need to, if you need tests or part of continuous integration. So you know exactly which uh, commit, which change uh, breaks those func functionality. In, and then it's. Uh, you, you are sure you have this safety net, so you are sure that okay, my feature works even if I developed it half a year ago, and there were there were a lot of changes. I have unit tests which uh, today are passing, so my code still works. Uh, okay, yeah, so the, that's what I said. How the debug later programming life cycle looks like? First, you develop, then the code grows. Uh, during this, when the code grows, someone, you or someone of your team, uh, injects a bug, make mistakes, even in, in another piece of code, but your code dependent, de depends on it. Uh, then this code grows. Uh, then there is a bug discovery. Let's say now that your code depends on other, but and the, uh, in this other module is uh, a bug, but it is exploited by your your module, your code base, so you have a defect, so you might, then you have to discover where it is, you are finding that the root cause is in another module, so you go to your friend and tell him, hey, root cause is your, in your module or in, in, uh, in your code, and uh, the team is also wastes time on discovering where it happened, uh, then bulk is found, during all of this process, code still grows because others are working on this project simultaneously, simultaneously and then the bug is fixed. So it's a little bit different than in TDD when you are uh, mixing this. So you 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 inject this bug because you don't you, you write a test which does not pass. So then you know oh okay I have a bug because my test doesn't pass or even does not compile and then you fix this bug. So you are sure that if this bug ever ever happens uh, later you will find it immediately. So, okay, now let's talk a little bit about test doubles. Uh, test doubles or test mocks or test stops uh, are uh, kind of uh, working with dependencies. And uh, so when, when to use them in embedded? Firstly, when you have some kind of uh, hardware dependency. Uh, you want to run your unit test both on your development machine and your, on your target board. So uh, you have to make some kind of isolation layer uh, from a hardware. Then you need to make some kind of test doubles uh, for write a code which will act like a hardware. Uh, the another thing, another uh, thing when you, when you should use this test mock is. Uh, when you want to uh, try your module with a, with an input which is difficult to produce in real environment. Uh, the next thing is a dependency of something volatile. So you are sure you are not sure if uh, this piece of code is stable, and but you don't want to. So you don't want to write a test which uses this piece of code because you are finding writing unit tests for this small thing which is. Uh, which is not related to this dependency. There are other kind of tests which call which we call integrate in integration tests, which are which uh, which are testing whole module as a black box. But in unit tests, we treat as a black box, but only one single piece of code. Uh, the other way, the other thing is we 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 will use something which is not yet ready, but we know API, then we may use a test double for it to continue our code. And uh, if you have something difficult to configure, we may also use test double. So the, the, there is a few examples. We want to test. Uh, we want to double some kind of uh, uh, Ethernet, uh, Ethernet driver, or Ethernet uh, machine, uh, Ethernet device, or we want to uh, test. We, we are using uh, operating system API, which we want to test, which we want to mock, or. Uh, or let's say we are connecting our module to database. We have only one license for database, which is big. We want to, so we uh, we don't want every developer to connect to database every time he runs his unit test. So there is also a need to write some kind of test uh, mock for uh, for the database. 
Uh, okay, now a uh, few variants of test doubles. It's like test dummy. Test dummy is just a uh, is just a function which feeds compiler, linker, or right, runtime environment. It just doesn't. Need, we we may have, we just need this uh, uh, this function to so so we will be able to build our unit test, but it does not nothing. The next thing is test stop. Test stop is a function which uh, returns our predefined value. It does not have any business logic, but uh, tries to, uh, okay, let's see what, how our module should behave when he will receive a uh, wrong status, for example, from its uh, dependent, model, dependent model. The next, uh, which is more, a little bit more complicated, is test spy. It's uh, similar to stub, but it has some kind of business logic. So it may, for example, run, uh, try to uh, look as a driver which has some kind of uh, state machines in it and uh, saves current state uh, to uh, and saves our state, so we are able to uh, test uh, some kind of uh, flow in our uh, module. Uh, the next, the, the next uh, more complicated is mock object. It's like full, uh, full module, full class, full uh, which is mocked, uh, which is closed in uh, our uh, test double. And uh, the other thing is exploiting fake. It's just a test stop or one of test double which, when it's called, it needs to assert. We, we, it, we, it shouldn't be called in a proper way of uh, of uh, flow in runtime. So, okay, so what are our mock options in C? Because in C++, C Sharp, or other high-level object-oriented programming language, we have interfaces, so we uh, just uh, program to interface, so it is very easy to mock them because we implement those interfaces as we want to. Often, frameworks for, uh, for those languages uh, make some kind of uh, dummy implementation of those interfaces for us, so we don't have to even consider it. But in C, we don't have such kind of uh, stuff in our in, in those frameworks. So the first thing, which is which I really like, is link time substitu substitution. Uh, so we uh, change whole day. We, we, sh we need to implement every in each each function from interface of our external external module, and then during uh, uh, and then feed linker with uh, this object file uh, from our implementation. It is like uh, the the Cons of it, I, I the pros of it, pro, the, uh, the good way why to do it is uh, because in link time substitution it's really clear uh, because we uh, inject our code for, for full module, we fully control this module. But the other, uh, okay, let's now move is, uh, to the runtime substitution. Runtime substitution is just we use function pointers which uh, covers our interface. It's also clear, but what's important, we need to control this interface to use uh, runtime substitution. And uh, functional pointers are especially good when we want to uh, different test cases to use different function implementations. So yeah, then it's, and they are, they are also very, uh, very clear to read. And, but what's uh, disadvantages of it? It's uh, your IDE often won't find, for example, the function definition for this function pointer because it, it doesn't have, because it's, co it's figure out in runtime. In link time substitution, some ideas uh, may, uh, may do it for you. And the last, which I don't like and which should be uh, considered only when link time and runtime substitution doesn't w don't work with your problem, is preprocessor pre substitution. So in your legacy code base, you have, for example, if dev test, and then one piece of code, and if not dev test, then another piece of code. I don't like uh, uh, such. Uh, I don't like such implementation, but sometimes they are necessary, especially if you are working with legacy code base, which is very big and not testable. So, what to avoid in a unit in TDD? Uh, first, uh, avoid the test, test static functions. As I mentioned on one of the first slides, state uh, you not, don't uh, want to uh, bind uh, your. Uh, we bind your unit test to the implementation details because then it will uh, produce a lot of false positives. So interface won't change so often than implementation, so test only interface. 
If you want to test static functions, often even uh, frameworks does not uh, provide any possible, any clear possible, clean possibility to test static functions. So sometimes you need to include whole uh, source file uh, to your unit test. It, it, look, it doesn't look good. And the other thing is code pollution. So you are injecting, a, uh, so you are injecting some piece of code just to make this code uh, testable. It's not a good, it's not, it, it also is it's not a good uh, way of, of doing it. So this if devs, for example, which I mentioned, are, are one of the examples of code pollution. I mean, the one way you, in TDD is it provides a better design because of uh, this uh, dependencies which are loosely coupled, but another thing is uh, that the test uh, some kind of, uh, make some, some kind of code pollution. So you need to be careful about it. Yeah. So now let's uh, talk about types of unit tests. Uh, the first is the functional test output verification. We treat our function as a black box. We uh, input. We, we make some input and expect uh, output. We don't ch check any states. That, these are very good uh, tests because they they are not binded to our uh, internal implementation. Uh, the next is the state verification, so we create some kind of stop uh, or mock object and we expect our, we expect, uh, for example, our testing module to change uh, something in this, uh, 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 to, 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 ch to change something in our, in our module or, uh, or mock, yeah, so that's, so that's uh, more, it's, it's uh, binded to, uh, internal implementation, but sometimes it, it is uh, it, it is necessary to use this kind of test, and then collaboration verification. This means just uh, that we ver verify how uh, the how the how uh, our module communicates with its dependencies. So we see if the proper function are called in a uh, proper order. Oh, yeah. So th th that's th that's then uh, the last uh, of uh, type of unit tests. So when do you use this test table? Uh, if you let's say you don't control external dependency, so it's a good way. It, it's there, then it's a good point to consider uh, using uh, test doubles, uh, and because you don't want yeah, and of also if it's, it's not stable enough. For example, let's say that uh, you are working in uh, in a real time operating system, uh, then you will you will have to make a test double for your. Uh, development environment, but when you will run your unit test on your target, it's not a good idea to make a test double for it because it's pretty stable. Uh, and the other way is uh, for when you uh, when your dependency is hard to trigger or takes a lot of time, uh, then it's uh, obvious. Obviously, you need to make a test double for it because uh, you 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 want to write unit tests which are fast. And which are uh, easy to, yeah, which are fast and which are easy to configure. So often, also, if your dependency is, is hard to configure, just don't waste don't waste time to configure it, but write a mock for it. Okay, now uh, more interesting topic. Uh, let's uh, say about uh, code coverage. Why, why is good, and why why is bad? It's like now it's. Uh, it doesn't mean that if you have high coverage numbers in your uh, code base or in your test suite, you have a high quality safety net. It's, uh, you may say that if uh, you, for example, achieve 80% or 90% of code coverage, uh, you may be sure that uh, your test uh, checks a lot of your code, but uh, uh, it doesn't say anything about the quality of your safety net. Uh, but it is good, uh, you have to uh, run code coverage just to know, but uh, don't treat it as a safety net. Uh, for example, I have seen before a kind of code base with unit testing, which were almost 100% coverage, but there was not assertion in, in those tests. So they are just executing code, ch checking nothing. 
And yeah, when you run such kind of uh, a test suit, you see 100 coverage, every test passes. So, okay, yeah, uh, I didn't make a, uh, a mistake. It's not true. You just know that uh, you didn't force CPU to exception, uh, CPU exception, because your code uh, runs uh, full, fully. But uh, this nothing show. Uh, but you are not sure that you didn't inject any bug. And again, it's very important because when you have some kind of test suit, you treat them as a safety net. So you are not very uh, so. So you won't check it uh, if you you won't check it manually. You just have okay. I have test suit, test case, so I don't have to do it. I, I've made those tests uh, just to uh, so I don't want to waste time on, on manually checking if I inject some kind of error in other piece of code. And this is a kind of uh, uh, data which shows uh, test coverage versus value of this coverage. So uh, it's uh, it, I, I've uh, copy, copied it from a fluoroside course, and it uh, shows that uh, the 80 per, if you achieve 80 percent of code coverage, then uh, your then the effort is similar to to the value which it introduced. But uh, after it, when you are uh, when you want to achieve 100 percent, then it's uh, the value doesn't grow because, for example, most of those tests will uh, test uh, some kind of trivial code, which uh, which won't break any anywhere. And uh, the last uh, the last slide I would like to tell you what is a harmful test. So. Uh, wrong test design, it means a lot of false positive, uh, developers got mad, developers ignores them, so it's just uh, for marketing uh, purpose to have such kind of test suits. And uh, the other, which is very often, uh, which is an error made very often by developers, is that uh, domain knowledge, so some kind of business logic, is introduced to a test, to a test case. So. Uh, you have almost you you have a kind of algorithm in your uh, in your code and then copy paste this algorithm to this test. So you just does, you do not test there anything because you expect uh, the value which is made the same in the same way that you made it in your code. So it's again uh, you just uh, have a test to which produce coverage, nothing more because it it, it won't give you gives you any value for your safety net. Yeah. Okay, so that's all of uh, my course. Do you have any questions or I hope that I introduced it uh, pretty well. I wanted to uh, focus on not on some kind of uh, basics of unit tests because they're not a hard part, but we wanted to uh, show you what uh, how to uh, some kind of uh, complicated things what what to focus during uh, your writing unit tests. And what is really really important in, from from a business logic point of view? That was very interesting. Yeah. <coughs> Could you give us a bit of uh, about your background? Uh, Jan, have you worked with uh, DDD before? Yeah. Okay. So I uh, my first year as an internship, I worked in a company which uses DDD. They uh, expect developers. They were writing code in C plus plus eleven using G Google Test, and they expected developers to write. Uh, Unit test for a piece piece of co new code, so I learned it there. Then I moved to the, in other company. Uh, we they were using a kind of uh, a tool which I didn't mention here for unit test, but I showed them the Google test again, and uh, I the, because I introduced it, I uh, have uh, read a lot about uh, unit tests in embedded systems. And uh, yeah, that's just I like to uh, read. Uh, do you know Uncle Bob? This uh, he's a f famous software guru. Uh, Rod uh, Martin is his surname is. So Uncle Bob is a guy who shows good practice in software development, but uh, from the object-oriented point of view. And I, w I like to just uh, try to implement his ideas in embedded system world. So kind of uh, what's his ideas about uh, design patterns and the unit testing, for example, methodologies, uh, how, to, how to do it in, a, in embedded world. So yeah, that's uh, my background about it. And I, there is a few books or 
few courses online, uh, for example, in plural site, which are uh, very good to go on right now. Uh, I especially uh, recommend a book uh, called uh, Test Driven Development for Embedded C, uh, written by James Greenings, as I remember. And he mentioned it, uh, TDD, but only for uh, the embedded systems and shows uh, a lot of how to break dependencies, uh, how to make mocks in, uh, for embedded uh, world. And uh, he is also an author of the CPP unit library. So, yeah, he, he, knows, he knows his job well. So, how do you do like system design or system architecture? Do you yeah. do that before? Or? Yeah, I love to. I like to have a. Uh, the, the hardest part, in my view, is uh, writing a test list. So you have to, because often you don't have some kind of clear requirements for a product. So it's least hard to write a test list for it. But uh, I, o I always write a unit test because of this confidence. Uh, I, I'm. Every, when, every, every time I'm sure that my code works because I have those unit tests. Uh, what I don't like is uh, when you, for example, work with legacy code, old code, and you have to change it. And the, often old code does not have unit tests, even if uh, pro in the project the new features has unit tests. So then uh, writing unit tests for it is sometimes terrible. Uh, you have to fix so many dependencies, that which is just uh, and you will waste time for it. In this time, you, will, for example, twice the implement your feature. So I often, uh, when I work with legacy code, I often try to introduce one test which will uh, which will exploit the defect which I will have to fix, and then try to write code which will make this test pass. But I don't write test cases for all the code which I. Have, which I'm working on, but only of this piece of functionality which is broken. But it's, uh, again, if it's hard to write such test, you should consider uh, if it's value from it. Yeah. But uh, I have been working in a project where also managers force us to uh, write such kind of unit test, and uh, there was, uh, so I, I could, I have two choice. I want to write a test first, and then uh, develop code or the other way around. I hate the other way around when I have to write tests for the code which I have already developed. So I, when I, so I always do the first way. Hmm. Do we have any other question for Jan? If everything went well, you will be able to see a video in YouTube um, within a few days. So. But if you have a lot of dependencies, uh, as I told you, it, it depends uh, how it, you should consider how, how you're back because how you uh, how you exploit it. Because when you write a new code, you just uh, write a test, so it is uh, so uh, you you're, so you will uh, fix those dependencies during implementation. But when you work with the old code, uh, it as I said, it's terrible and. You should decide if you want to, yeah, it's like, uh, sometimes it's worth because you are sure, because for example, one, uh, one piece of code uh, has a lot of bugs, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really worth to spend a lot of time to have a unit test framework for it, because if you once uh, set up such kind of uh, testing framework for, a, for example, source file, then in the next, then next you will only care about writing unit tests for it because you fixed all of the dependencies. So it just do, yeah, one time work for, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Thank you.